Okay, so today we're going to go over how to take off a rack of the uh, core carburetors from a universal Japanese motorcycle. In this case, it's a Suzuki GS750, uh, 1979, but it'll be pretty similar on any Japanese motorcycle that has four carburetors that built in the 80s. Uh, typically, there's two kinds of carbs that are going to come on them. You have the uh, Kahen uh, VM carbs, like on my bike, and you have the Mikuni uh, BSCB carbs, and that's about that's a pretty much it that you'll see on these bikes. Uh, everything's going to be similar. Nothing I've ever worked on has been that that complicated. Even something with a, a V twin or a V four, pretty much the same thing, just different shaped carburetors. We're going to kind of go through the novice intermediate side of taking these off. I'm going to show you how to get inside the carburetors. I'm not going to go through the whole rebuild, but we are going to go through how to get in there so you can see what's going on and you can fix whatever your individual problem is by yourself. It shouldn't take more than an hour, but we're going to speed it up in the video. Good luck. Okay, so first thing I did is I took off my seat. I just took it all the way off. It's gone. Took the nuts out. It's much easier this way. You don't get any problems with having it in the way or anything. Uh, the next thing you do is you take off the tank. This can be a problem because your tank probably has some gas in it. But it's not that hard, I assure you. The trick is to have a good place to put the tank. If you put your tank on the cement or anything where it's going to fall, it's going to get dinged up, you're going to have to paint it. You're not going to be happy. So, I have a good place to put the tank. The way that you get the one off of this, this GS850 is there's a screw in here, which holds it on naturally. This one's pretty simple. I just had it loose already because I was doing this recently. We're just going to stick it over there. The tank lifts off pretty easily. Uh... Whenever you're doing this, your tank is going to have a few a few vacuum hoses attached to it. The vacuum hoses that you're going to have are usually ones for the petcock, for the, the gasoline, not vacuum I guess, but it's a big hose. Uh, and you're probably going to have one for a recirculation system that's sometimes in a gas tank. On California bikes or later bikes, I don't think this has one. A lot of times you're also going to see a fuel sender unit in the tank. We'll have some three, two, three wires. You want to take that off carefully. But this one is almost ready to go. So I'm going to go under here. I'm going to disconnect the fuel and the vacuum connection on the back of the tank. And I'm going to take the tank off. Notice I have the handlebars straight for this. Now, part of the reason that went so quickly is because I had the tank off recently. I had the vacuum sender, or I had the uh, the vacuum sender and the gas gauge connectors here they were all off so it shouldn't be too complicated for you but that's about where this one is the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the carburetors which are these guys right here off the bike okay so on this GS850 getting the carburetors off is pretty easy the way that you do it is you need to detach the intake side boots and the exhaust or the engine side boots from both sides of the carburetor. The way that this is done is there's little hose clamps on both sides which collar around both throats on both sides of the carburetors. Now on this bike and I think on most older GS models I happen to know there's a little trick the intake box you can take off without taking the carburetors off first. It makes for much easier fitment of the carburetors. A lot of the older bikes, you can't really take the intake box off and you have to fit it in with the box on. It makes it harder. 
Uh, it's something you don't notice so much now, but when you put them on later, it makes it a lot easier, a lot harder, depending what bike you have. I'm going to go through this bike now and take the intake box off, because we can. And then I'm going to take off the boots on both sides to get the carburetors. On this one, there's a screw on this side, and there's a screw on this side that hold the box up. We're going to detach those first before we take off the bands that go around the carburetor throats. See everything dropping there. I actually, I have the other screw off on the other side already. You can see how everything's moving. It's just dying to get off of that thing. On this GS850, everything's Phillips head. Pretty easy. So, you shouldn't have too much problem getting to it. That's the first one. You can see it's already coming, coming loose there. Coming nice and loose. Now we just need to get all the other ones and it'll have a similar situation. Oop, it's already coming off. That's great. There we go. So we got the intake box off. There's a hose that normally goes up top here. I took it off. It's this guy. The trick with the hoses is just take some pictures, get a diagram from the manual, so find some way to remember how they go back on because it's important to put them back on the same way. I happen to be able to remember this one, so I'm not too worried about it. This is the earbox we took off. It's important when you look in here that you want to make sure all these intake boots are nice and not cracked pliable. You should be able to push them in. They shouldn't have any cracks, melts, nothing. Okay, so now we're going to take the carburetor bank off of the off of the exhaust side. Like we were saying in the GSA 50 here, I have all this room. That's nice because I can get the carburetors now and I can work on them without any problem. There's no uh, stuff in there. Locate the bands. I'm going to take these off. And we're going to try to pull the carbs off. The trick with the carbs is that you usually have to do kind of a rocking motion to get them off. So you got to loosen everything up and then pull them off. They don't come right off, but they will come off. If you have an old bike, they, all the rubber may be holding them on pretty tight. Things may be stuck. Sometimes it just takes a good firm hand and everything comes comes off. Basically over here is where the band is. And we're just loosening them up and we can get that whole thing off in about two seconds. Let's see where we are. There's the middle of the second one there. Yep. Yes. All right, we're going to take this off. There you go. They're off. One of the things you'll notice here top here these carbs you can see the throttle cables this bike has a dual throttle you might be able to see it work here a little you see it moving those are the throttles 
you have to take the throttles off before you can really get in there and root around with the carbs. If you try to take this off right now, it won't let you because it's tied to the throttle cable, so you got to pull this off. On this one, it's 10 millimeter wrench here and here, and it should come right off like a split. Pretty easy. It's a lot harder to take these throttle cables off. It's a lot harder to take these throttle cables off when the tank's on. Some people can do it, but I'm not too fond of that. If you just give those a little turn, you can usually do them with your fingers. If it's not all rusty and crusty. Sometimes you'll need to move the positive or the opposite side on these duals to get the uh, the linkage open enough to pull everything out, but it's usually pretty quick. Here you go. There you go. There's your side there. On this side, it's pretty easy. Just got a little thing here. Pull it out. If you guys can see that. And then, got their opposite side. He's already popped out on me, see? And we just need to go to trace it down here to where it pops out. Not everybody's going to be like this exactly, but man, danged if they're not really close. But here you go. Here's your set of four carburetors. We're going to work on these, clean them up, and we'll be good to go. That's how to get them off. So you're halfway home, man.